Hi, my name is Ruth Martifio from Data School Cohort 15 and I'm going to show you how to build a Coxcomb chart using an existing template. This chart type is nice for showing different values between large number of categories. It requires a little bit of data prep, so I'm going to start off by showing you how to prepare your data and then we'll put that into the Tableau template. So here we have our chart template and we're going to start by bringing in our new data. We can go up to data, new data source, or we can just go to our files and folders and drag in the new data source. And here we have pre-aggregated pre data. So at least you need to have these two. You need to have your category or dimension in question and your measure, which we'll make into a number. The next thing you need to do is union the data to itself. And now you have the first sheet and where it's copied again, you have table one. We don't need this so we can hide it. Next thing we need to do is go into our new data still to make a calculated field, which we'll call pad. And what this is going to say is if that table name, table name is equal to what it was called was table then one, otherwise 102. And what that does is it creates two values, one and 102 for the two copies of the data. And what that does is that allows us to number all of the little increments that are going to be used to make these segments. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to 100, 102. And that just gives a nice curve on the edges on making the circular shapes. So we have our subcategory, our sales, and now we have our pad, and that's all we need to replace the template. So we'll go back into the template and we can have a look. There are two values that need to be replaced. This needs to be renamed to match the incoming field. So we're going to call it sales. And this needs to be renamed subcategory. Subcategory. And having done that, we can then go to our old, uh, go to our existing data, and we can say replace. And we're going to replace our existing with our new. OK. And something's not happy, but we can see here that the sales hasn't replaced the other sales. So we're just going to go to replace references and we're going to say anything that was initially pointing to this, point the calculations to this field instead, and then everything's fine. And now we no longer need our original template. We can close that. We might also maybe want to sort these according to a field such as sales, and that will just maybe organize the chart a little bit more. And then we can see all of our other values have been replaced as well. So we could then turn around and say, we now have sales by subcategory. And we can change our other thing to say sales. And now you have a Coxcomb chart with your data. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you now feel confident to make a coxcomb chart yourself. Please check the description of this video for the links to the material you'll need to make this chart yourself. And if you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy my video for how to build a Rutherford chart, which has a similar layout of construction to the coxcomb. Click the link on the screen to watch it next.